Now we're going to learn about all of the different processes in procurement management. The first process is called plan procurement management. Think of this process as if you're going for shopping for your project. It is in this process that you will actually decide as to what products or services do you actually require to get the project done. And you also need to decide as to whether you should make those products or services by yourself or whether you should acquire them from the outside. And you also need to plan about how exactly will you go about purchasing the things that you require for your project. In this process, you will create a very important document by the name of the Procurement Statement of Work. And this document includes all of the work and the activities that the seller is required to complete for the buyer. So for example, if you're buying some sort of a product or services for your project, this is the document which will detail about all of the work that needs to be done by the person that you're purchasing it from. And therefore, it includes all of the actual work done regarding the procurement. Furthermore, this document also includes fulfilling other requirements. So in case you require the seller to make any sort of reports or fulfill the criteria for any sort of communications or meetings, then that information should also be included in the procurement statement of work. So putting it simply includes all of the work that needs to be done by the seller for the buyer. And please do keep in mind that we're talking about this process from the perspective of the buyer meaning that you are purchasing products or services for your project. You will also need to create the procurement documents. This includes the guidelines, background information on the project, and the selection criteria. During this process, you will also conduct the make or buy analysis. And during this analysis, you will decide whether to do the project work all by yourself, meaning do you actually want to make the product or service which needs to be used on the project, or are you going to outsource all of the work or maybe part of the work? If you decide to outsource the work or buy a product or a service from sellers on the outside, this is usually done when you want to decrease the risk because every company is not good at everything. For example, you may be good at product development, but maybe you're not that great at supply chain management. So in that case, you would outsource the supply chain work to an outsourced supplier. In what situation would you want to do the work yourself or make the product or service which needs to be used on the project? So you would choose to do this in a situation where you want to retain more copyright control over your product or service in case you don't want your private information going out into the market. Next, let's take a look at the conduct procurements process. Now, this is the actual process where you will be conducting the procurements, and this includes the procurement statement of work and the procurement documents to the sellers. It also includes answering any questions which the sellers may ask. And once the sellers have submitted their responses, you would review them. And finally, based on your criteria, you would end up selecting a seller. And that is how you would conduct the procurements. And finally, we're going to look at how are you going to control the procurements. So controlling procurements is all about how you're going to manage the contractual relationship between the buyer and the seller. And the major objective here is that you need to make sure that all of the terms which are contained in the contract are fulfilled by both parties. And during this process, as a project manager, you may be involved in, firstly, authorizing payments to the seller, and also, you may be reviewing the invoices from the seller. 
You may be monitoring the cost, schedule, and the scope of the procurement. You will also be performing audits and inspections of the seller's processes and the deliverables which they give you. You will also be analyzing what is and what is not contained within the contract. Furthermore, you will also hold performance review meetings with the seller. You will also be managing the changes for procurements. And finally, you will be reporting on the performance for both parties, for the buyer as well as the seller. So the control procurements process is all about making sure that the work that is supposed to be done on the procurements is going according to plan. Good job, everyone. I'll see you in the next lecture.